It's been a year since City Skylines 2 stumbled out the gate like a drunk at closing time, and let's be real, this game is as dead as a dodo. Well, hold on to your horses, because to mark the one-year anniversary, Paradox Interactive dropped a bombshell, a new DLC to mark its official one-year anniversary. Redemption arc, I hear you cry. Well, mm, about that. Turns out this shiny new DLC had sod all to do with City Skylines 2. Nope, instead, they were flogging more DLC for the original game. One that hasn't seen a lick of new content in 18 months. Talk about a slap in the face. Even the most diehard City Skylines 2 fanboys out there have got to admit, this is like getting booted out of the strip club after you just paid for a dance. The sequel was supposed to usher in a new era of city building goodness, but instead it's ushered you in to a bin bag of broken promises. So to mark its glorious shambolic year on this planet, I thought I'd do a little retrospective, have a look at the updates they've been slinging at us and see if they've actually managed to polish this turd. So put the kettle on, grab yourself a cuppa and let's have a mass debate on the disaster that is City Skylines 2. Let's dive headfirst into this new DLC announcement then. So, Paradox Interactive just unveiled Mountain Village for the original City Skylines. Yet, yeah, it's a bit awkward that, ain't it? I mean, especially since Paradox themselves swore blind 18 months ago that the original game was done and dusted, all wrapped up with a nice little bow as they prepped us for the grand entrance that is City Skylines 2. And why is it they've gone crawling back to their old flame, you ask? Well, the Steam charts don't lie, do they? It turns out there's only about five to 6,000 poor sods playing City Skylines 2 on the regular, which is two or 3,000 less than the original game, a game that's about to be a decade old in a few months. It's like the Hugh Hefner of gaming where everyone clamours to the old wrinkly bloke because he has at least a nice house. Paradox must be sweating buckets because even they've got to admit it now, the shit really has hit the fan and it's been sprayed everywhere. So what's Paradox got to say for themselves with this new DLC then? Here they are giving it large with their official statement. And they say, we are thrilled to announce that we have brand new content for City Skylines developed by two amazing content creators, all implemented by our talented partners at Tantalus. Oh, they're thrilled, are they? Of course they are, because this statement is practically screaming, look over here, not at that dumpster fire that is the sequel. Now let's dig into this a bit more. They reckon the DLC ain't got nothing to do with City Skylines 2's development because technically they didn't get Get their hands dirty. They go on to say this content has been in the works for some time as we know many of you still love building and expanding your cities in the original city skylines. Well that's actually a load of bollocks. They said clear as day the original was finished, no more updates, final curtain call. Cool. This was never on the roadmap. Let's face it, this wasn't some long term master plan. This was a knee jerk reaction trying to patch up the gaping hole from the cluster that they've landed themselves in and trying to claw back revenue to keep their plummeting stock price from plummeting further. And wait for it folks, get the drum roll ready because here comes the absolute peak of their nonsense. We also want to reassure those of you that play City Skylines 2 that the development of this new content for City Skylines is an entirely separate effort. The content you'll find in this release for City Skylines has been implemented by Tantalus, the studio who managed the console ports for City Skylines. Oh, is that right? An entirely separate effort, is it? Now, if we're taking that at face value, fine. Maybe the poor sods slaving away on City Skylines 2 weren't directly involved, but come on lads, they're still throwing cash at it, paying salaries, software fees, the whole shebang to get Tantalus to whip this up. So even if it ain't directly pinching from the sequel's budget, it's still siphoning funds away, no two ways about it. Then they go on with this gem, no resources were diverted from City Skylines 2 for this, our friends at Colossal Order remain fully focused on developing and improving City Skylines 2. This approach allows us to release some new updates without compromising on either game. The fact that they even mention City Skylines 2 here is like admitting that they've got an elephant in the room and it's one ugly lumbering beast. They know exactly how this is going to look and they're desperate to convince you it's all business as usual, but we ain't buying it, are we? Here's the truth of it, right? Are we pissed off that the original City Skylines is getting some new DLC love? No, not at all. In fact, for the diehard fans still tapping away at it, 
good on you. I'm chuffed that the OG is getting more content. I really am. It's still the top dog in the city building world. And it's kind of sweet seeing a bit of life pump back into a game we all thought was six feet under. But is the rub I do have a bone to pick with the fact that it's yet more paid DLC. It's like Rockstar suddenly dropping a DLC for GTA 4, innit? Bit weird, a bit pointless, but whatever. I'll let that one slide. It's small potatoes in the grand scheme of things. No, the real issue here is City Skylines 2. What kind of message does this send? Rolling out this new DLC on the anniversary of the sequel's launch. What a paradox playing at. It's like a dodgy partner buying you flowers after getting caught with their trousers down. There's a bit of guilt in the air if you ask me. They know the sequel's an absolute car crash and this little move is as subtle as a brick through a window. So let's discuss the so-called improvements to City Skylines 2, shall we? No secret on my side, the Cockney Gamer channel has been laying into this disaster since day one. We've churned out a few videos on this monumental cock-up of a launch and not because we're haters, mind you, we're actually big fans of City Skylines as a franchise. We gave the sequel, though, a low score and that was us being generous. One of the worst offenders right from the get-go, performance. It was so bad, it had you wondering if Paradox were taking the piss. But I've got to hand it to them. Credit where credit's due. They pulled their socks up a bit in that department. It don't chug along like a rusty old banger anymore when you're trying to open a map for the first time. And for the most part, your cities won't collapse into a fiery pit of despair just because your population dares to grow. It's still far from perfect with stutters and whatnot, but hey, at least it's a bit smoother for those of you on the lower end cards. Improvement, yes, but let's not start popping the champagne just yet. The fundamentals are still a shambles, and I ain't convinced they'll ever be able to sort them out. Now, the modding scene, that's a proper sore spot for me. It doesn't even come close to the original City Skylines, and that's because Paradox decided to ditch the good old Steam Workshop. Mods exist, sure, and there's a few decent ones out there, but this ain't got the same ease of use or the sheer variety that made the first game's modding community so banging and that's on Paradox. They shot themselves in the foot on that one. Then we've got the core of the game itself, and this is where things get grim. The zoning mechanics are straight up awful. Big gaps between buildings like they've been social distancing themselves for the last three years straight since COVID, and it just looks tired and dated, especially when you compare it to new city builders that have actually managed to figure this stuff out. And don't get me started on the simulation side of things. It's like everything's held together with duct tape. Nothing truly feels connected. Transit's a bit of a mess, cargo haulings a disaster, and everything's just a bit meh. Honestly, I reckon City Skylines 2 came out at the wrong time. With that shiny new Unity engine on the horizon, it could have really benefited from a bit more tech under the hood. There was all this big hype about Unreal 5 possibly being the chosen engine before the game was announced, but presumably the simulation aspect didn't match the tech. But now they're trying to shove a square peg in a round hole, and Unity itself looks like it's struggling in all aspects. You only need to look at the god-awful traffic issues, which still ain't fixed properly. Cars still doing that mad last second lane switch like a driver is suffering seizures. And don't even get me started on the graphics, that was my biggest letdown. It never felt shiny or new, like they slapped a new paint job on the same old clunker. The buildings look drab, architecture basic, and everything is still a bit blocky, but now without the nice little details like seeing firemen actually get out of their trucks. Just one bad design choice after another. And the DLC, oh mate, the beach DLC, honestly, that was the funniest, most ridiculous thing I've ever seen in this industry. Like trying to sell ice to a bloody Eskimo. Paradox made some stinkers here, but the big one has to be for console players who thought they might get some City Skylines 2 action, but now it looks like that is never gonna happen. So this new DLC announcement, bit of a head scratcher, isn't it? I mean, it's strange timing because right now, City Skylines 2 is gasping for air like a fish out of water. It's desperate for a win, begging for a shot of morphine to keep it on life support and let's be honest we all want it to pull through we're all praying they can somehow get this mess turned around push the game to where city skylines 2 deserves to be but this dlc is a damning indictment of the state of play a quiet retreat from paradox an admission that they cocked it up without actually owning up to it from where i'm sitting this game is as dead as a door now and you know what 
there's no shame in pulling the plug. Sometimes you just gotta admit you made a right pig's ear of things, start afresh and move on. Start anew with a proper engine that can handle the weight of what a city builder should be. Get cracking on City Skylines 3 and maybe in a few years we'll see the comeback that we've all been hoping for. Because the way I see it, the fundamentals of what's wrong with City Skylines 2 run so deep they're practically stitched into its DNA. Paradox, take a bit of humble pie, accept defeat and move on lads. After all, rainbows, they can show up in the middle of a storm. So, here's hoping for a brighter day. Until next time, my lovelies, Reggie out.